every island, every country, every nation will not be able to stand the fierce anger of God. Whenever God sends any man, it's always before any destruction comes. When he sent Noah, it was before the flood. And the apostles were sent out when they were here long before he comes back for the church. You that are here tonight that have not yet obeyed God's word, this is your opportunity. Regardless of how young, how old, remember, this is your opportunity to get right. I was watching the news before I came here in Seoul, South Korea, having a big Halloween celebration. People was crowded and started stampeding in the streets. So far, I believe the number still going up. When I left, the number was at 159 dead. Celebrating the devil. Because Halloween is of the devil. You've been tricked and hell gonna be your treat. That's right. God purpose for man to get right, but he always make a way for us to get right with him. He's not an unjust God, he's a just God. God will not instruct us to get right and then don't show us how. That's right. This is why the scriptures are here. Get what I'm telling you. The scriptures is equal to a compass. But never a captain. You know, when we was coming to our hotel, every time I'm here in the Bahamas, I see these large cruise ships. Some of them look bigger than some of them are, bigger than some buildings. And America have some large buildings. And I think of how one day when the Lord comes, the earth is going to be functioning like it is now. Everyday life will be going on. You're going to be gone about your everyday business if you're still alive. And when God appear, hear me good. You won't have time to correct nothing. When the Lord appear, everything is going to be halted at his appearance. Can you imagine? Look up. And there is the Lord, That's right. the one that religions have played with, have made mockery of, have insulted, hmm. have denied, have rejected, have lied on, hmm. have used and misused his precepts, his law, his concepts. Thou slap lined in the Bible. You know, a lot of folks say, I'll be glad when the Lord come. Hmm. Are you sure about that? Okay. Pastor Jennings, I'm sick of this world. I'll be glad when the Lord come. All right, but uh, what's in it for you? Woe unto you. Here, here, here. <clears throat> I want to talk to you tonight about the coming of the Lord. And what's in it for you? That's it. A lot of folks say, you know what? I'll be glad when the police come. You won't be glad if they're coming to arrest you. <laughs> so many people brag, oh, when the Lord come, it'll all be over. All right. But what's in it for you? For you. I want you to hear I want to right. take my time and soak you and just give you something to think about. That's right. Real good. 
That's right. Hear me good now. Follow me. The book of Amos, chapter 5, <coughs> and we're at verse 18. All right. Woe unto you. Woe. Woe. Now, that woe means I'm sorry for you. That's right. Do you get me? That's right. I am sorry for you. Woe unto you. That desire the day of the Lord. Ah. Hmm. Then why are you rushing it? That's right. I hear preachers brag, if the Lord come, I'm ready to go back with him right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you are? You ready to go where? That's right. You ready to go upstairs? That's right. That's right. In order, yeah, to go back with God, mm. you cannot have a spot of sin. That's right. I want to say that's impossible, Pastor Jennings. That's your lying mouth. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Any time God said for us to be something, and obviously God won't tell us to do something that we're not able to do with his help. That's right. That's right. When he issues something, he's going to issue it, and then he's going to help you accomplish it if you believe it and obey it. That's it. You see, I just can't believe it. I got to believe it and obey it. That's right. I got to have faith in it, and then I got to obey it so I can obtain what I believe in. That's right. Glory to God. In Ephesians chapter 5. Yeah. And we're at verse 26. <coughs> uh -huh. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. All that. Hold it. Begin at verse 25. At verse 25. Follow me. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, beat your wives. Husbands, love your wives. Yeah, man. <laughs> Amen. I want it to be good for you men that love to beat up women and grab them by the collar and throw your finger in their face and slap them and kick them. That's right. And then go to some church and try to speak in tongue. Ain't no time for no tongue speaking. That's right. I know where you're going to be appreciating. You cuss your wife out, didn't get mad because <laughs> you won't say amen. Amen. Bible said, from that same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. That's right. Get this. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands. Love your wives. Love your wife. And what is that comparison to, William? Even as Christ. Even as Jesus. Also loved the church. Loved his people. And that's the church. Th that's the church. And what? And gave himself for it. Get me. Hmm. He gave himself. Gave himself. Meaning he died for it. That's right. So here comes Jesus Christ, Redeemer, Savior, which was God manifested in the flesh, and he offered up that flesh. He offered up the man. He offered up the body, which was a sacrifice for our sins. How many would die for you? Mm. And the one that's dying didn't do no wrong. Amen. We done the wrong. That's right. You can't even hardly get people that say they love you, die for you. <laughs> That's right. How about they say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, love you, love you, love you. <laughs> and if something happened to you, I'm right there. Right. Mm -hmm. And when something happened to you, the only thing about them that's right there is when. That's it. Because they gone. That's, that's right. Took off. <laughs> but here comes Jesus. Mm. Innocent. Flawless. That's right. Infallible. Without sin. Glory right. to God. That's right. Came here and left an example. Pattern. Pattern. Demonstrated the lifestyle of God. Mm. Are you getting what I'm telling? <laughs> That's right. That's what the scripture means when it says, He left us an example that we should follow His steps. That's it. He left us an example that we may know the lifestyle of God. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. What is the lifestyle of God, the purpose of God, the agenda that God have for us, the human family? How should we walk? You know you sing that song. Wonderful. I want to be just like him. <laughs> Amen. Do you really mean it? Do you really mean it? Or you sing it because it sounds good? Mm-hmm. I want to be just like him when he come. Uh, <laughs> coming on a cloud. There we are. You're going to see him. <laughs> right. I want to be just like him. Then they say, I want to walk just like him. My Lord. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I want to walk just like him. That's right. When he come, oh, he coming on the cloud. Then they say, <laughs> I want to talk just like him. That's well, right. My Lord, look Lord. what you want to do. Amen. Walk like him. Mm. Talk like him. 
Amen. Be like them. My God. Well, there have to be some surrendering involved. That's right. Some offering up, some giving up. Oh, yes. Then you got to follow his pattern. One yes. thing I say about the Son of God when he was walking here on earth, there was no deviation. No. From the pattern or the example that he left for us to follow. That's right. Jesus, who was God manifested in the flesh, the Spirit of God wanted to show humanity how to live, how to walk, how to talk. God's will, God's right. purpose was demonstrated right here in the earth. That's right. So when we come after him, hmm. we won't have an excuse oh, yes. of not knowing how to be just like him. <laughs> That's right. How to walk just like him. Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings, how did he walk? How did he talk? Well, let me sum it up with Scripture. Sum it up. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2. Hear this. And we're at verse 21. What is it? For even hereunto were ye called. Even hereunto were ye called. And the Bible said the Lord has spoken. That's right. He hath called the whole earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. That's right. Even here unto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us. Christ. Christ. The Son of Man suffered for us. Leaving us an example. Leaving us a pattern. Then, leaving us an example. Showing us how to do. That's right. What to do. That's right. When to do it. Glory be to God and who to do it to. Leaving us an example. Oh, what? That ye should follow his steps. Are you listening tonight? Mm. Your steps is no good. <laughs> Your steps led you to the bar. <laughs> That's right. Didn't it? That's right. That's Your true. steps led you right to the bar. Get that whiskey. <laughs> Amen. Hypocrite. <laughs> Your steps led you to that bottle of Bohemian rum. That's right. You see all the amens I got? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Undoubtedly, some of you have that rum home tonight. <laughs> they may feel as though they're going to need it after this after message. This. <laughs> That's, right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. He left us an example that what? That ye should follow his steps. All right. Let's look at his steps and look at yours. My Lord. His steps, perfect infallible you know a wing footed man can't walk a straight line <laughs> that's right <laughs> you put a man that's wing footed his feet gonna be everywhere oh yeah amen oh, but yes. you know it's like a model when they teach a model how to walk amen uh, they put the feet right in front of each other that's right you get someone that trained on a balance beam before he or she start running and start flipping before you even start walking you that's first right. have to learn how to stand that's right Balance yourself. That's right. Before you even start running, quoting scriptures. Hmm. Talking about you want to save everybody. <laughs> Amen. First, do you. Oh, yes. Learn how to stand. And to learn how to stand like Jesus, you got to understand Jesus' lifestyle. That's it. And in order to understand Jesus' lifestyle, I must be taught about Jesus' lifestyle. Then take my time. That's it in order to master Jesus' lifestyle, and I can master what I can understand. That's right. Are you getting me? Leaving us an example. Leaving us. Amen. An example that what? That ye should follow his steps. So you're trying to mm. be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Walk like him. Talk like him. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Pray like him. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I had brothers say, Pastor Jen, I want to be like you. I said, you're a fool. <laughs> Amen. And I told them, you don't see me trying to be like you. That's right. You know, some folks say they want to be like me. You don't know me. No, no. no. Hey, man, you don't know me. You don't know what I'm up against. Listen, no I don't even want to be like me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. Who are you talking? If That's I can right. stop being Pastor Jen, what time is it? <laughs> what time is it, brother? About what? Oh, I quit right now at 7.50, at, at 10 minutes to 8. Amen. Being like Jesus, difficult. Oh, yes. Demand yeah. that heaven have dropped to the human family. That's right. 
because being like Jesus eliminate you looking at anybody about anything. That's right. It makes you draw all attention. Mm. Thank God to yourself. Leaving us an example. Leaving us an example. That ye should follow his steps. His, his steps? His steps. It didn't say Pastor Jennings' steps. No, his steps. You know, some folk wing-footed, pigeon-toed, bow-legged. <laughs> That's right. Walk on their toes, feet everywhere. <laughs> That's right. But when you follow Jesus' steps, steps. who's the boss, mm -hmm. commander, yeah. chief? You know, if any of you ever been to the military, it doesn't matter what part of the country or what part of the island you're from, mm -hmm. everybody come in that one platoon and get demands by one sergeant. That's right. That sergeant don't care about your culture. That sergeant don't care how you're raised. No. That, car, that sergeant don't even care about your religious belief. That sergeant's job is to shape your mind and shape your body and shape your heart to serve the wicked country you're asked to fight for. That's right. Now do you get what I'm talking about? That's right. That's and you pledge your allegiance to the flag of that old wicked country. Amen. We pledge our allegiance to God. Amen. And God only. That's right. We don't pledge our allegiance to no country. No. Because it is against the Bible to swear. To swear. That's and when right. you pledge your allegiance, that means to give all. That's right. We don't give our all to nobody but God. Amen. Because nobody is deserving of us all but God. That's right. Don't you know Jesus said, swear not? Swear not at all. Jesus said, swear not. That's right. He didn't say, you, uh, you can do it a little bit. You, you can do it a little bit there. That's why we tell the saints when you go to court and they tell you, put your hand in the Bible. God, people don't do that. No. Oh, no, we don't go to no court. Well, somebody said, render the Caesar the thing that the Caesar, <laughs> render true. to God the thing that a God. That's true. That's true. But if anything the government asks us to do, mm -hmm. That contradict the Bible, we don't do. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 34. Let's hear the Bible talk. But I say unto what? you. But I say unto Get you. Get Pastor Jennings out of it. That's Get right. me out of it. Because this right. goes for me too. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Jesus talking, but, the boss. But I say unto you. I say to you. Swear not at all. No, you can do it a little bit. Swear not at all. Well, if I don't do it, they say I'll be penalized. Swear not at all. No, they say if I don't do it, I go to jail. Swear not at all. If I don't do it, they give me a thousand dollar fine, so common sense tell me to do it so I don't pay the money. Swear not at all. I don't care. That's right. Go ahead, man. If God said it, yes. That's obey it. it or go to hell. But I say unto you. Who's talking? I say unto Who's you. Who's talking? I say unto when you. When he talk, you shut up. That's right. Go ahead. Am I right? Go ahead. When he talk, you shut up. That's right. Don't tell me what common sense said. Tell me what the Bible said. But I say unto you. Why do, did you hear this? I say to you. Swear not at all. At all. Neither by heaven. What? Neither by heaven. So when you go to court. Go ahead, brother. And they tell you, put your hands in the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth? And nothing but the truth. So help you, God, just tell them, I'm firm. Firm. That's I'm right. firm. I don't swear. That's you right. don't swear? No, because my boss says. Swear not at all. That means if the judge asks me what the Bible says. Swear not at all. If my mother asks me what the Bible says. Swear not at all. If my pastor asks me what the Bible says. Swear not at all. If my husband asks me what the Bible says. Swear not at all. I say unto you. Who said it? I say unto you. Swear not at all. That's, That's why. When you're in the church, we don't go to the military. That's right. We don't bear arms. That's right. Because the Bible said the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. Not carnal. But mighty through God. That's right. Pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. That's right. Bringing into captivity every thought, every thought. to the obedience of Christ. That's right. Swear not. Swear not at all. That's why we tell our young people when you go to college, don't you go join some sorority. Yeah. No, sir. That's, that's of right. the devil. That's of the devil. No initiation here. That's right. No sorority. No initiation. That's no right. swearing. That's none. right. None. I say unto you, swear not at all. You see, folks ain't ready to live holy like they claim. No. I want to be like Jesus. You want to be like Jesus, though. <laughs> that's right. Saying over that. that that's right. Man. I say unto you. I say, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Unto you. Swear not at all. Ain't no loopholes there. Oh, no. Not a loophole the size of a gnat's eyelash 
in the left corner of his eye. That's right. Hmm? That's right. God say don't swear. You better not. That's right. The moment you do it, you sin. That's right. Well, what about? No, you can't even bring me an example. No. You can't even bring me a scenario. You know why? No. All the examples fall under that one scripture. I say unto you, swear not at all. Amen. Do it a little bit. Swear not at all. Some I mean, of you swear by cussing at each other. Yeah. Hmm? That's true. Cuss each other out. That's true. Ha! Ah. One That's scripture right. says, from the same mouth proceeded blessings and cussings. And cussings. All right, let's go back to where we were. I want to soak you a little. You can shout on tomorrow. Back in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Follow me. For even hereunto were ye called. What happened? Because Christ also suffered for us. What did he do? Leaving us an example that he ye left us an example. That now, you better look at this. Yeah, look at this. He didn't come leave us an example so you can run with your opinion. No. No, he didn't. Without controversy, great the mystery of God is God was manifested in the flesh. In the flesh. Do you think God came in the flesh so I could give my opinion? No, no way. God didn't walk this earth to give or respect nobody's opinion? No. Because when God talked, everybody got to hear it. That's right. And the Holy Ghost that's in you make you hear God first. That's right. Are you getting what I'm talking? Amen. The Holy Book says what? For even hereunto were ye called, because, what? because Christ, Christ also suffered for suffered us, for us, leaving us an example, leaving us a pattern that ye should follow his no, steps. You should do it. Ye should follow. Then you know if you don't do it, you should do it. That's right. That's Let's right. go back to the foundation of it. Back in, in the book, book of Amos. Back in the book of Everybody Amos. Everybody, follow me. Follow me in your Bible. Back in the book of Amos, chapter five mm. and verse eighteen. Listen. Woe unto you. Woe. Yeah. Amen. Whoa. Hmm. I got pulpit down. Oh, yes. Whoa, I'll tell you. That desire the day of the Lord. Whoa, Why? To what end is it for you? What are you going to get out of it? Amen. What end? What's the Lord's day going to be, Williams? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. That's Have something. you, That's in all your years going to church, do not most preachers always make the coming of the Lord this great happy time. This great happy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, they make songs. Great celebration. I'm going back with Jesus. Great celebration. Happy, 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 happy. That's All right. right. That's right. Yes, they do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But wait a minute. Amen. The Holy Ghost said. The day of the Lord is darkness. And what? And not light. So the question is, mm. are you going to be happy? Right. That's right. Mm. Are you going to be glad when he appears? Amen. Don't look at how long you had the Holy Ghost. No. Don't even look at your position. No, no. Your position don't impress God. Who have a position higher than he? Amen. Don't care what you own. That's he right. owned the universe. That's right. That's right. Who care about your money, your house, your cars, your breath is nothing but lent to you. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm talking? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So when you hear these men, Lord, come for me. Mm. I'm ready right now. Are you sure? Are you sure? Give me, go back to Ephesians. Go back in Ephesians. Chapter 5. Amen. And go back to verse Verse 25. Back in I want to take my time and soak you a little. Amen. Hear me good. Back in Ephesians 5 and verse 25. What is it? Husbands, love your wives, uh, even as Christ also loved the church. Yes. And gave himself for it. All right. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Hold it. Hmm. When you're sanctified, Amen. you're set apart. That's when it. I came up, they used to say you're in a holy sanctified church. Yeah. Sanctified, sanctification is when you're set apart or set aside for the using of God, for the purpose of God. That's right. Holy is a lifestyle. That's right. Sanctification, you're separated to live that lifestyle. That's it. All right? That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Wait a minute. He's talking about what he want to do with the church. Right. He got his church set aside. Yeah. And what is he doing to his church? And cleanse it. Wait a minute. Cleanse it. He's cleaning mm. his church. That's right. All right? 
With the washing with, of water. With what? With the washing of water. And how is the church getting clean? By the word. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't care how cute you are. That's right. I don't care if you're close to the bishop. <laughs> That's right. I don't care if you're the bishop's pet. Amen. You know, in school, they got the teacher's pet. Teacher's pet. I don't care how close you are to any minister. No, I'm not. I don't care if you're the minister's wife, son, or daughter, or the minister himself. That's right. If you die dirty, mm. you're lost. That's right. That's right. Are you listening, church? Amen. Amen. So what does the coming of the Lord mean for you? For you. What end is it? So you hear what the word of God says. Woe unto you that desire Woe the day of the Lord. Unto you that desire it. Woe Amen. unto you that want it. The day Woe Amen. unto you that long for it. To what end is it for you? What the, is it? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Pastor Jenna, don't you want God to hurry up and come? No. No way. What? You're the first preacher I've ever heard say that. I, I say it with understanding. That's right. No, I don't want him to hurry up. No. Why not? Take as long as you want and give me all the time I need. That's right. That's right. Give me all the time I need. That's right. So if there's anything in my life out of place, get in place. Get in place. Anything that's broken, yeah. get mended. Yeah. Anything that's wrong, get right. That's it. Anything that's weak, get built up. That's right. That's right. So before the coming of the Lord, That's right. this is the time for fixing. That's it. This is the fixing era. The fixing this is the time to mend that which is broken. Yo, yo. This is the time to take that which is out of place and put in place. That's right. Put yourself in check. That's right. Many of you working on getting close to some bishop. You better get close to Christ. Oh, yes. Or go to hell. Oh, yes. Are you listening? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Whoa! Woe unto you. Amen. They make songs about the coming of Jesus. Yes, they and do. I haven't heard a gloomy song yet. Not yet. <laughs> Sometimes right. they say, when I came up, I used to hear a song. When I go to heaven, I'm going to walk around. That's right. Walk around heaven all day, old liar. <laughs> oh, amen. <laughs> That's what they say. No Bible said you going to walk around heaven all day. All the Bible day. ain't never said that. No. The Bible says sing with the spirit. That's right. Sing with understanding. Sing with understanding. The Bible ain't saying you going to walk around heaven all day. No, no, nowhere. <laughs> amen. Are you getting me? What went to you that desire the day of the Lord? What is it? To what end is it for go back, you? Go back to Ephesians. Back Let's finish the, that up. Back in Ephesians 5, now we're at verse 26. Did still. you know? Yeah. Did Amen. you know making the first resurrection is hard? It's hard. But did you know going to hell is easy? Oh, yes. You might say, well, Pastor Jen, how much wrong I got to do to be lost? One. One thing. Pastor Dennis, it can't be that tough. Oh, no? Hmm. Listen at the Bible real good in the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes. You know, in America, preachers are preaching, the Lord has to overlook some things about you hmm. before he accepts you. Yeah. Who are you? You ain't that good. No. Think of it. Anytime Think jobs hire you based upon your resume yeah. and based upon stipulations, if that job wants that company to run right, they ain't gonna overlook things about you. No, they won't. They want you to have something to contribute to that company. That's right. You mean to tell me you really think God gonna overlook some things about you? My Lord. To get you to the kingdom? If that is true, next time I come to the Bahamas, I ain't coming to church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Not me. Oh, For what? No. That's right. I'm not coming to church. No. For what? Oh, no. Just come here, say like in December, spend the whole winter here. Mm. That way it's all nice. All nice. And you can enjoy the devil in good weather. That's right. You don't need to be cold while you're doing it. That's right. <laughs> Listen closely. In Ephesians. Let me show you how hard it is. Ephesians chapter 5 now at verse 27. 
that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Talking about the church. Church. Not the building. That's right. His people. That's right. The Lord is waiting to present a obedient, disciplined, biblical compliant people. That's right. To who? That he might present it to himself. Oh. Amen. Nobody going to present it to him. No. He going to present the church to himself. What kind? A glorious church. What is the strictness that he have for the church? Not having spot. Uh-oh. My Lord. I want this to be good for you cigarette suckers in here. <laughs> That's right. That's you right. pipe smokers. Yeah. Beer guzzlers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said he going to do what? Not having spot. Amen. You that got the cigarettes in your car. Mm. Driving here smoking. Yeah. Put almost a, a whole two packs of gum in your mouth so nobody won't smell it. But That's it come through your pores because of the sweat. That's right. He going to do what? That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having what? Not having spots. Ah, your second wife and your third husband are spots. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Not having spot. Not having what? Not having spot. Do you hear this? Amen. What else? Or a wrinkle. You know what a wrinkle is? Look at your clothing. That's when right. there's a wrinkle there, that material's out of place. That's right. So if you look at your life, there are wrinkles in your life showing there's something out of place. You Amen. know, all fabric is not the same. Right. Sometimes you get fabric, that wrinkle is stubborn, and it requires more steam. That's right. So look at your life. life. Sometimes there's a wrinkle there. That thing is real stubborn. In other words, it's difficulty. You got difficulty to bring that thing into place. That's right. So you need more scripture to apply to it, more steam, more toughness, more roughness of the scripture. That's right. But I certainly didn't come to the Bahamas to pet you up. <laughs> Amen. Mm -mm, not at all. Oh, no. no not, that's not me. Oh, no. I'm traveling the world by God's permission to prepare you to meet God. That's it. That's it. That's what, hallelujah, that's what I'm traveling for. That's around right. the world to prepare you to meet God because whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, that don't stop or slow down God's arrival. That's right. Oh, thank God there's a set time for his arrival. Oh, yes. Hey, man, he ain't come yet because the church ain't like he wanted yet. That's right. That's why he got the word here for the cleansing, cleansing. of the church, for the cleansing of his people. That's right. Listen. Not having spot. Wait a minute. When he presented, they can't have what? Not having spot. My Look Lord, at yourself Lord. now. My Lord. See, it's the spots there. What else? Or wrinkle. How many wrinkles do you have? Mm. What else? Or any such thing. Any such thing that cover everything that's ungodly and what they God purpose for us to be. But that it should be holy. That what? It should be holy. That it? It should be holy. That talk to the, it is the church. It's, that's right. That it is his people. That's right. And it purpose that his people, the church, the saints be what? It should be holy. Oh, holy. What else? And without blemish. <sighs> Lord, help us without blemish. Without blemish? Without blemish. Without blemish means without fault. My Lord, my Lord. So don't tell me you can't live a blameless life. If the Lord said that's the kind of people he's going to present, he mean that. That's right. And before you go back, you got to be blameless. blameless. And what scripture says, unrebukable. Mm. And in order to be blameless and unrebukable now, you got to be rebuked and you got to be chastised now so when it come, you escape eternal chastisement. That's right. That's right. My Lord, help us, Lord. Amen. Mm. Amen. So if God chastised me now, it may not feel good. Right. Book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter 12. Wherein all are partakers. Hebrews chapter 12, we'll start at verse 5. Follow me, Bahamas. Hebrews chapter 12, we'll begin at verse 5. Listen. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Yeah, have forgotten. My, mm, forgotten. The buildup. Which speaketh unto the you. The exaltation. You know when you're being exalted, you're being built up. That's right. That you may have an inheritance among them. Thank 
God that are sanctified. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Yes. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. You hear that? Amen. The word of God said, despise not, not thou the chastening of the Lord. That's why a lot of folk love these weak, feeble, spineless, That's sugar right. daddy preachers. That's right. Who don't preach against nothing. No. That's why a lot of folk can't stand me. <laughs> That's right. Many folk, when they first heard me, they said I'm the most meanest man they ever heard. <laughs> He's arrogant. He's mean. He don't have no love. Amen. I love all of you. That's why I'm here beating you with Bible. That's right. I'm not trying to be your friend. No preacher supposed to be trying to be a friend to you. No. The preacher job is to tell you the word of God and let God be his friend. That's right. The job of the preacher is not have no church favoritism. That's right. To nobody. That's right. That's right. You do God will and please God and die. Amen. Go and take God so you can be acceptable with him. My Lord. No favoritism when it comes to wife. No favoritism no. when it comes to children. No favoritism when it comes to minister. The Bible says he that has respect the person commits commit sin. Commit sin. That's right. He must always be neutral. That's right. And the only one should be in that corner with him is God. That's right. His first priority is supposed to please God. That's it. And not himself. That's right. That's his first obligation. That's right. That's his first commitment. Amen. Hear this. My son, despise not thou the chastening Spies of the not Lord. The chastening of the Lord. Of the Lord, nor, nor faint. Don't faint. Don't give up. When thou art rebuked of him. You know, a lot of folk in the church have never been rebuked. No. And when they get laid down to get chastised, they can't take it. They run out of there. That's they right. They say, oh, man, that preacher was off the devil. Why he get on me? And, uh, uh, you ain't supposed to do that in church. Don't you hear the Bible talking? No faint when thou art rebuked of him. God rebuke you through Scripture. Oh, yeah. I don't care how strong you feel like you are, how strong you think you are. The true test of your strength is when you got to endure. That's right. Bible said, endure hardness as a good soldier. That's right. Uh -huh. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. By what? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Ah. Mm. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. I come from a family of eight. Mm -hmm. Very close-knitted family that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Five brothers and three sisters. My father been dead now, going on 31 years. My mother, uh, she turned, I believe, 91 or 92 this year. Amen. Very close family. So when I was a child, my father would chastise me. Most time when you're a kid and you get chastised by your parents, right away you think they don't love you. That's right. But when you become an adult and have a better understanding of the value of that chastisement, you appreciate it when you become an adult. That's right. Because that chastisement kept you out of a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. Am I right, I said? Amen. When I was younger, your next-door neighbor can chastise you. Yeah. When you get wrong, and then the next-door neighbor tell the parents what you've done. Yeah. And then the parents, they come get you all over again. That's right. The day right. folks don't want chastisement. No. Too no. weak. Too weak. Too feeble. Yeah. Too frail. Too timid. Yep. Chastisement is a part of your development. That's right. That's right. Even a dog, when it's a pup, get chastised yeah. because it got to be trained. Oh, yes. So when we are young, thank God, naturally and spiritually, we got to get chastised because chastisement come for our protection. That's right. And our safety. Yeah. To keep us from the lake of fire. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And what? And scourgeth every son whom who he receiveth. Wait a minute. How many get scourged? And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. That don't exempt me. That's right. Every son. Pastor Jennings, the word hit you all the time. All the time. <laughs> Amen. But you preach it. All right. <laughs> That's right. I can't change it. That's right. That make it worse. Amen. Because here, how many men take a gun and blow their own head off? Mm. It's God make me preach it. It don't just come at you. No. That thing turn around, and when I see it hitting me, I can't duck it. <laughs> That's right. Huh? 
That's right. Williams, get a scripture in that thing. Come at me. I can't duck and throw it off on you. That's right. That thing hit me. <laughs> I yeah, take it. Take it. Someone say, you don't look like you're being hit. That's all right. I feel it. That's Amen. something hit. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I shake it off. Shake it off. Then I tie into you with Bible so you can share the pain that I have. <laughs> hey! Amen. So we can all hurt together. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. Do you get what I'm telling you? For whom the Lord loveth. And then any time a preacher say that Bible don't hurt him, he ain't no preacher. No, it's not a preacher. He ain't no preacher. No way. The Bible don't offend me. Blessed is he that is not offended in me. It don't offend me, but God knows it hurts. Oh, yes. There's some tough things in here that God said we got to do. Oh, yes. When these men try to project this spiritual image like they got, oh, the Bible don't hurt me. He's of the devil. That's of the devil. The Bible even hurts the devil. <laughs> That's right. So who are you? That's right. Go ahead, brother. Oh, Richard God. For, what did he say, son? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. He go after. And scorneth. Hold it. Amen. Whom the Lord loveth, love, he chasteneth. He chasteneth. He go after you. That's right. Put you in line. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's obligated to keep you out of hell. That's, that's right. He's obligated. God obligates himself. Mm. Not even God himself can go outside of the book and break one scripture. That's right. He can't tell me to believe in something that he transgressed. That's right. If he going to transgress his own word, I can't trust it. That's true. Hallelujah. God ain't going to transgress his own word. No way. Not God. Oh, no. He tells us to trust in his word. That's right. Well, who is this word? He tells us to trust in himself. himself. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word, what? Was God. Was God. Mm -hmm. For whom the Lord loveth, so he chasteneth. Whom the Lord love, he chasteneth. He chaseth. And scourgeth every son. Scourge every son. Whom he receiveth. Oh. Every son. Yeah. To be received, to be accepted. That's right. Then you're going to be scourged, reprimanded. That's why he tell you to repent of your sins. That's right. He's reprimanding you before you repent. Yeah. So you can repent. Oh, yes. So the word of God that you hear that's speaking out against your wrong convicts your heart. That's right. Godless sorrow worketh Wor repentance. That's it. Sorrow set in. Yeah. Conviction set in. Oh, yeah. Glory to God, then you realize that you are a child of the devil. <laughs> that's right. Huh? That's right. Hey Amen. You long-haired men. Want to wear your hair long like a woman. Like a woman. Moving your hair around. <laughs> Using your wife bobby pins. That's right. Bobby pins ain't made for you. No. Bobby pins ain't made for that woman. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm a Rastafarian. Who cares? Who cares? You better be holy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I follow King Heli Selassie. Heli Selassie's dead. Amen. He's the king of kings and lords of lords. He, that's a lie out of hell. Well, that's a lie. The king of kings and lords of lords don't need no help. No. Do you know your history? Wonderful, brother. Let's, let me give you a brief historical lesson about King Heli Selassie, mm -hmm. the descendants mm -hmm. of King David, yeah. who come from the tribe of Judah. Yeah. He's dead now. Yeah. But they say he was king of kings. Lord of Lords, which is a lie out of hell. <laughs> That's right. Can you prove it, Pastor Jesus? Oh, I'm yes. about to do it right now. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 15. First Timothy 6, 16 says. Which in verse 15. Verse 15. Which in his time. You better go to verse 14. At verse 14. All right. That thou keep this commandment without spot. That you keep this order without spot. Unrebukable. Unrebukable. Until the appearing until, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the appearing of who? Of our Lord Jesus Christ. What else did he tell us about Jesus? Which in his time. Which in his time. He shall show. The Lord will show us. Who is the blessed. Who is the blessed. And only potentate. And only potentate. Tell us who the Bible said he is. The king of kings. What? The king of kings. And lord of lords. King of kings. And lord of lords. Lord. 
Hallelujah. Of love. Who only has who immortality. Only. only. Who only. Who only. Who only has immortality. Wait a minute. He only had what? Who only has immortality. King Henry Celeste is not immortal. That's right. He was a mortal man that's dead and went to dust. That's right. Hallelujah. Who only have immortality. Dwelling in the light. Dwelling in the light. Which no man can approach no man unto. No man can approach unto. Unto whom no man unto has whom, seen. No, no man have seen. Nor can see. That's God. To whom be honor. Honor. And power. And power. Everlasting. Hallelujah. King Helly Selassie ain't everlasting. That's right. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. If you are king of kings and lords of lords. My Lord. Let me give you a brief history lesson. Hallelujah. And I'm not making it up. You can go search your history books or yeah. Google it. Yeah. During World War II, Hallelujah. Mussolini, head of Italy, mm -hmm. invaded Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Mussolini allied himself with Hitler, dictator of Germany. Mm -hmm. When Mussolini, the dictator of Italy at the time, invaded Ethiopia, King Haile Selassie mm. came before the UN, mm. the United Nations, pleading for other nations to help Ethiopia mm. fight Mussolini, mm. fight the Germans. Mm. Now, if you are king of kings, king of kings, and Lord of law. Of, that's right. You don't plead your case to men. No, no. You can call heaven. That's right. And make 10,000 legion of angels. That's right. Destroy your enemy. That's right. That's right. You don't need guns. No. You don't need tanks. Oh, no. You can call fire from heaven because you are fire from heaven. That's right. That's right. That's blaspheme. Yeah. Not even Halassi himself declared himself to be king of kings, lord of lords. Lord of lords. And the island of Jamaica ran with it. Yeah. Mm. And one of the ones that ran with it and made it so popular was Mr. Marley. Mm. Kings of kings make kings. songs. Lords of lords. King Haile Selassie was no more king of kings, lords of lords, than I'm Princess Diana's brother. <laughs> That's right. That's foolish talk. That's foolish talk. Amen. King of kings, lord of lords. Lord of lords. That's God. Oh, yes. And God himself. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Come on, son. Back in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 7. Listen. If ye endure chastening. If ye endure chastening. Now, sometimes the, the reason why many people rebel or retaliate against chastising mm -hmm. is because of being taught something for years and then find out it's wrong. That's right. And it's hard for them to accept the fact I've been lied to by my mother, my father, my pastor, my bishop, my elder. Yeah. And because they love him or her so much, they can't accept the fact the information they got was incorrect. That's right. Always remember, no man or no woman is wiser than God. That's right. That's right. And any information we get, That's right. if man say yes and God say no, no. If God say no, it's no. That's right. You can love the man all you want, but if God say no, love the man but bow to the no. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. What did he say? If ye endure chastening, if ye endure chastening God dealeth with you as with sons. You see, if God, I want God to deal with me. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. As with? As with sons. Showing a relationship. That's right. Between that man. And the Spirit of God. For what son is what he? What son is he? Whom the Father chasteth not. Whom the Lord don't chase. Whom the Lord don't get in behind. Whom the Lord don't reprimand. Like these young, inexperienced parents of the day. Yeah. When I came up, we wasn't even allowed to walk around church frequently. Right. We was trained to sit down in service. That's right. 
We wasn't allowed to go to the bathroom 15 times in 20 minutes. That's right. When I came up, my mother and father raised us. We had to have a sit down period at home. Mm -hmm. We couldn't sit down in color, coloring books and all that. No, we had to sit down and do nothing but sit, sit down. Amen. What was our parents doing? Disciplining us to let us know there's a time to move and there's a time not to move. That's right. Do you see what I'm telling you? That's right. Listen. If ye endure chastening. If ye do endure, endure chastening, God, God dealeth with you as with sons. Deals with you as with sons. For what son what is he? What son is he? Whom the father chasteth not. Whom? What, what kind of person are you? Yeah. That the Lord won't chase. That's right. What is it? But if ye be without chastisement. Uh-oh. If you be without correction, if you be without rebuke, what? Well, all everybody are partakers. You're going to get it sometime in your life. That's right. But if you walk around without it and reject it, how do God categorize us? Then are ye bastards. Well, what? Ye are bastards and not what? sons. Wait, 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 wait. What? Then are ye bastards. But I'm close to bishop. Ye, then are ye bastards. But bishop liked me. Then are ye bastards. I wouldn't mm. care if you're Gabriel's sister. That's right. And you got one of his feathers in your hat. <laughs> That's right. The holy book says. Then are ye bastards. And not what? And not sons. Amen. Not sons. God is chastising the world now. Oh, yeah. Through many forms. Look at the storms that he brings. That's right. What is he doing teaching man you don't own nothing? That's right. You brag about your house, brag about your car, brag about your money. Yeah. He bring rain and sweep everything you have away. Amen. Brag about your wife and you done made her a goddess. Yes. God smite her and take her out the world. That's right. Brag about your husband and you made him equal to God. And God say, who is my equal, is my saith the Holy One. That's right. God strike him and he can't even spit off himself. Oh, yes. God refused to have equals. That's right. God refused to have partners. That's right. God refused to have rivals. Yeah. He is God alone and he alone should be worship That's and right. not man. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Look at what you have. Even if your house is paid off yeah. and your car is paid off. If you don't know it, you know this now. Oh, yes. You still don't own it. Still don't own it. Still, don't, it's not yours. That's right. Look how you come here. That's true. Let's evaluate how we come here. First Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 7. And let's evaluate how we leave. Give chapter and verse, William. First Timothy chapter 6 and I'm at the seventh verse. Everybody all right? For we brought nothing into this world. Uh-oh. Amen. Whatever you have that's good, value it while you have it. That's right. If God give it to you and God put it in your life, value it. Value it. Cherish it. Don't misuse it. Don't abuse it. Don't take it for granted. Don't that's take right. advantage of it. Love it. Protect it. Watch over it. Right. But don't put it higher than God. That's right. What did he say? For we brought nothing into this world. Nothing. That's why I don't care about what a person brag about. Yeah. I think about all the churches and property that the truth of God own around the world. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord come, he consumed the earth with their increase. That's right. Burn it all up. Burn it up. Can't take nothing. All the thousands of dollars spending, buying churches, meeting the needs of the hungry, putting clothes on the naked, food in the mouth of hungry folk. That's right. But when the Lord come, he's going to consume all that up. That's right. Do you hear it? For we brought nothing into this world. All right, get this. And it is certain. Wait a minute. Amen. And no need for no one to even think otherwise. No. You brought nothing here. And it and is God certain. God said it is certain. We can carry nothing out. When you leave here, you leave in the way you came. That's right. Let the preacher give you the fanciest funeral he wants. Right. Let him dress you up in a custom tailor made dress or suit. Yeah. Let the choir sing over you. That you're going up yonder to be with your Lord. <laughs> That's right. Let them break out shouting at your funeral. At your funeral. Until your body is shaking on the casket. <laughs> That's right. Let the preacher get up and tell you, I see 
uh, Brother Brown. Hmm. Ain't yeah, and he done. I see him up there standing next to his mother. Yeah. Ha. Oh, there's Brother Brown. Ha. And Brother Brown said, Oh, Lord, why don't you go and help me? <laughs> and when Brother Brown. Ha. At the end, he got his hand over his ears like he got a migraine headache. That's right. Amen. We brought nothing into this world. These prosperity preachers. Amen. They're not going to want to see God. No. They got you thinking right here is heaven. This ain't heaven. Oh, no. If this is heaven, I don't want it. That's right. The most valuable thing in this life. Yeah. Hear me good. Young man, young, young man. woman, middle-aged man, down to you children. Amen. The most valuable thing in life is not land. No. It's not money. It's not wealth. That's right. It's God. God. Your wife, your girlfriend Go ahead. that you have, you ain't going to have it long. That's right. That's right. You go in that house that the Lord bless you with. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Taketh away. Amen. You will understand that this physical body is nothing but a temporary temple. That's all. For God's using. That's it. For the word of God say he made us for his glory. That's meaning right. he made us for his using. That's right. All right, is it? For we brought nothing into this world. We brought nothing into the world. And it is certain. Oh. We can carry nothing out. Certain. certain. So to God. Amen. That we're going out. It is certain we can carry anything. nothing out. It's, you ain't carrying nothing. nothing. Nothing out. Amen. That's right. I don't believe in all that 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars for a casket. Amen. What I look like getting a suit made to play football. Huh. I'm going to get a three piece suit made right. to go play football. Hmm. And hey, these men spend a fortune for a casket That's to right. place it in dirt. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Amen. All that money, your family can use that money. Yeah. Your wife can use it. Oh, yeah. Church can use it. And you come mm. along, spend all that money for an old casket to put your old rotten body in there. That's right. That's Get a right. suit, special made. Yeah. Didn't wear the suit when he was alive. Wear it when he died. When, when he died. Custom made shoes. Never wore alligator shoes in his life. <laughs> Never even saw an alligator. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Wait till he died. Get That's alligator right. shoes for Mr. Fred. That's right. Get a custom-made three-piece silk suit That's for right. Bishop Carmichael. Yeah. Raw silk shirt. I wouldn't care if you covered his body with silk worms. Amen. And they custom-made the shirt, tie, socks, and suit while he's in the morgue. While he's in the morgue. He died without God. He's going to hell. That's it. Please, please, let's get an understanding. Being a preacher is no guarantee you're getting the kingdom. No way. You didn't know that? No, no. The preachers have no guarantee. No. That don't mean you're a preacher. That means you're going in. No. Oh, no. It's more difficult for you to get in. That's right. Because you got to live by what you preach. That's right. Are you getting Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you getting it, man? For we brought nothing into this world. Prove it, Pastor Jennings. God called and sent Moses direct. Yeah. And Moses was the example for any preacher that come after him. That's right. He saw Canaan. Saw it. Saw it. He was a leader of the number that was as the sands of the sea. That's right. Saw the promised land. That's didn't right. step two inches in there. Yes. See how frightening that is? Oh, yes. Saw it. Didn't make it. Saw it. Didn't make it. I want to say, well, God buried him. That's right, God buried him, but he didn't get in the promised land. That's right. Not at all. Not at all. What did Canaan represent? New Jerusalem. Yeah. The place that was prepared for God's people. Oh, yeah. Now, our job is to prepare you for New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But to make those preparations, you got to repent of your sins after you hear the word of God. The word of God come to work on your heart to show you your condition. That's right. And your condition, Bahamas, is a sinful condition. That's right. That's right. You, 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 you're in your sins now. In your sins. Amen. That's why you're in your false church, drinking and smoking and gambling and all of that stuff. Yeah. Go to the casino, lying and swearing and 
partying and out there shaking your hips with a bottle of rum. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Walking the streets in your hot pants. Yeah. And everything in the pants is out. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Amen. Amen. The young women said, it's too hot, Pastor Dennis, to wear a long dress. You're going to wish you had it on in hell. You had it on. Oh, yes. You're going to wish you had on something to protect you from that fire. That's right. Are you getting it? That's right. Get this. Back in Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. All right. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Woe. Woe unto you. The world going to be functioning like it is now. Imagine. Imagine. We that. might be having church. That's right. Being a convention. That's right. A Lord appear. Mm. How many in that church or in that congregation is going to ascend? My Lord. Oh. How many in the pulpit going to ascend? That's right. Your love form ain't going to get him in there. No. And his title ain't going to get him in there. Oh, no. Are you listening to the old man? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. You out here living together ain't married, smoking and drinking and gambling. You young girls out here with your shorts and hot pants. Hot pants. You men with your long hair like you a girl. That's right. Walking around with a man bun. <laughs> Amen. A man bun. Imagine that. Imagine that. A man bun. Him and his wife fighting over the mirror. <laughs> That's right. And he asking her, is my bun straight? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> is my bun straight, I said. <laughs> That's right. God help us. Man. The devil always come with something to rob man of the masculine nature that God gave him. That's right. Look at you, woman. Amen. You, the devil got you out here looking like Jezebel. Yeah. Don't yell me. Give me the book of Kings. Yep. Follow me and hear me. Amen. I want you to understand what I'm telling you. I want to show you what Jezebel looked like. That's right. Follow me in your Bible. You know, Jezebel was up in the tower. Yes. And there was a man of God came in town by the name of Jehu. Jehu was known because he was a rough rider of his chariot. Hmm. And Jehu saw... Jezebel up there, when well, she heard that he was coming in town, the Bible says how she painted her face and tied her hair. Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 9. Parliament. And we'll start at verse 30. I want all you folks to get this because the church you go to don't preach it. No. He tell you, God ain't looking at you outward. He looking at your heart. And you go there and get your paint kit. <laughs> That's right. What you call makeup and paint your lips. You know your lips ain't that color. <laughs> That's right. You know if you woke up and your lips were so red like blood, you'll be begging some healer. Amen. To touch your lips. That's right. That's right. Why do you need lipstick on and rouge on your face and fake eyelashes that's almost long as your finger? Yes. When you blink your eye, your eyes are like it's waving at somebody. That's right. Am I right? That's right. What's wrong with the way God made you? That's right. We teach our women love the way God made you. Yeah. Oh, yes. Huh? Amen. I know many of you didn't know no better and don't know no better. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jennings, why the preachers don't speak against it? Because he loved to see it. Love to see it. That's why you come to church in these mini skirts, about long as my jacket, mm -hmm. and the split in that. Reverend Hooker Book ain't gonna say nothing. No. Because he loved to see them stems. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. Only thing that got me preaching is because the Bible says it. <laughs> if the Bible didn't say it, I wouldn't preach it. That's right. I wouldn't preach it. No. No, for what? Amen. No! No, no. That's why some folks say, that man preached stuff. Ain't, ain't no one preaching that. What well, I have to tell you that I'm not like the others. Mm -hmm. Because a normal man is not going to tell no not woman, put clothes on. That's right. Am I right, man? Yeah. Amen. Ain't no normal man going to tell you when you out here put a long dress on, no. cover your body. No. That man going to ask you why you got so much clothes on. That's right. He going to ask you what's wrong with you. Are you cold? <laughs> you got all them clothes on for. Why you got your hair covered? Let your hair down. Yeah. 
Show your back. Show your thighs. Oh, yes. Reveal them hips. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's what the man going to say. The man will say. God got to come along and deal with the man and take him from being a colonel man. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Do you hear this? Second Kings chapter 9 and we're at verse 30. What is it? And when Jehu was come to Jezreel. Listen, when Jehu came to Jezreel. Jezebel heard of it. Uh-oh, Jezebel heard of it. And she painted her face. What? And she painted her face. But that's, it's makeup, it's what you call makeup today. Paint, right. Jehu was coming? Yeah, Jezebel. Oh, all right. And she painted her face. What she do? And she painted her face. Amen. What she do? She painted her face. She painted her face. And she painted her face. <laughs> wow, that, that makes me dizzy. <laughs> What? And she painted her face. And what else did she do? And tied her head. Tied her head. All right, what happened to her? And looked out at a window. And said what? And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace. Had Zimri peace. Who slew his master. Who killed his master. And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side who? Now, she got all done up to look appealing to Jehu. That's right. Jehu was not stunting her. Jehu wasn't paying her no mind. Right. Jehu rode in town to do God's will. That's it. That's what, Je that's what that, that was Jehu's focus. That's right. And then he, what did he say? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, who is on my side? Who? Who is on my side? He and didn't say, hey, 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 Jezebel, you want to come out for a go for a date? No. <laughs> no, no. Hey, let's go get a drink, Jesse. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Jesse, where you get that makeup from? What store you buy that from? What department store? Amen. Uh, not who? that. No. And said, who? who is on my side? Who? On? Who? Who is on my side? Who? Who? And they looked out to him two or three eunuchs. Yes. And he said. What did he say for them to do to Jezebel? Throw her down. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't use the staircase. No. Throw her down. Don't use the elevator. Throw her down. She was thrown clean out the window. She didn't, she didn't get her hair done for that. That's right. She That's didn't right. get makeup done for that. And he said, throw it down. So they threw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall. And what? And on the horses. And what? And he, tro and he trod her underfoot. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 30. I want it to be good for my makeup wearing sisters. That's right. Jeremiah chapter I don't, 4. I don't hate you, but I got to tell you because your bishop won't. Amen. He'll tell you God ain't looking at your, at your outward honey child. Honey child. In the church, <laughs> that's huh? right, that's right. the preachers today, they don't call you sister or mother. No. Huh? no. Hold that and give me First Timothy. For First Timothy. Because I want to see, oh, no according to the Bible, what should a woman be called in the church. That's right. Huh? First Timothy chapter 5. Listen at this. First Timothy 5 and we're at verse 2. Follow me, hear me. The elder women as mothers. All right, all the mothers. The elder women in the church, you call them mothers. The younger. The younger. As sisters. No, honey child. As sisters. Sweetie pie. Sisters. Sweetie pie, honey bun. Sisters. The younger as sisters. What else? With, With all, all purity. When you call her sister, you better have an agenda behind it. That's right. Do you hear that? The elder women is mothers. Mother. The younger is sisters with all purity. Do you hear it? Amen. All the sisters on the choir, ain't none of you know church baby doll. B babe, that's right. That's right. You ain't none of you, ain't none of you, honey. Honeys. Honey, who's honey? You, your <laughs> husband, honey, and that's it. That's it. And when the husband in church, he ain't got the business calling you honey. That's right. You sister in church. That's right. He can give you any pet name at home. At home. He can call you hamburger if you want. <laughs> he come home, speak to you, to kiss him. How's my ham sandwich? <laughs> That's right. Yeah? That's right. How's my macaroni and cheese? That's right. Yeah? Amen. How's my, how's, how's my French fries French doing? Fries. <laughs> That's right. Call you whatever you like. Whatever you like. And in church, if you's a mother, mm. an aged woman. The elder women is mothers. Younger. As sisters with all purity. Be clean about it. That's right. Mm. Are you kidding me? Back in Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 30. That's what? And when thou art spoiled, 
What wilt thou do? That's the problem. This Amen. is what keeps us from being ready when the Lord comes because some church spoiled us in our sins. That's right. We done got comfortable in it with these old fake fingernails, all painted red, green, burgundy. That's right. You change your color dress, you change your color fingernails. Yeah. You change your color dress, you change your color eyeshadow. Amen. Full of pride. Oh, yes. Men out here with shorts, half shorts. naked. Amen. Walking the streets bare chested. Mm hmm. Cussing and drinking and smoking weed at will. <laughs> That's right. Huh? And when thou art spoiled. Don't you know the way the church has got it now is no sin being a sinner? That's right. No sin being a That's sinner? Right. That's right. And the preachers done bow to the devil. I mean, bow to him. Oh, yes. Even the word of God asks the question, who shall stand up for me? That's right. Uh -huh. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? When you're spoiled, Amen. what you going to do? Though thou, Though thou closest thyself close with crimson, yourself with crimson and Though thou deckest deck thee, thee with, with ornaments, of, ornaments gold. of gold, Though thou rentest thy Though you face, rent your face with in painting, paint, in vain, in vain, shalt thou make thyself fair. You've done all of it in vain, and what's going to happen? Thy lovers will despise thee. Your lovers thee. going to despise you. They will seek thy They're life. They're going to seek your life. That's I'm right. after your life. I'm yeah. after your life so you can give it to God. Oh, yes. When you come to God and repent of your sins, you'll find that war paint won't help you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Be the way God made you. Yeah. Give that store back its hair. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. You know that ain't your hair. It's not your hair. Here's your eyebrow silver and your hair is midnight black like an Indian. <laughs> Amen. What's the matter with you? Got all that glue in your hair to put somebody else's hair on. That's right. You got somebody else's hair on and got a hat on that. Got two hats. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hair ain't long enough. You go shopping to a store and go buy a, a bane. Or oh, buy two plastic, go buy a ponytail. Yeah. Hair ain't long enough for a ponytail, so they go in the ponytail aisle. <laughs> That's right. Go buy one. That's right. Can't find no bobby pin, staple it on. Staple it. That's right. This generation so foolish and so wild, yeah, whatever wild. style come out to make us look like fools, we go after. Oh, that's right. Grandma in her 60s and 70s and 80s years old, Mini skirts, ankle Jesus. chains, painted toenails. Oh, yeah. Got an ankle chain over her ankle, putting pressure on that big vein. That's right. Cutting off her blood circulation. That's right. That's that a... big vein. Amen. And she came up to the preacher. <laughs> Bishop, I'm, I'm having problem with this leg. I need prayer. Take that ankle chain off. Take it off. That's so right. the blood can go where it needs to go. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Yeah, you old enough to be somebody's grandmother with a dress and a skirt, short as my jacket, with a split in that, yeah. and you in some church shout. Some church. Some church. All in men faces. Yeah. All in Bishop's face. And Bishop just looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. You mean this religious garbage? It's garbage. That have contaminate churches? Yeah. You actually don't think you think that stuff represents <laughs> God? God is clean. That's right. He's not dirty. That's right. That's right. Look at the slop mm. in church hiding under the name Jesus. Jesus. And we have gotten so comfortable in trash, we call trash clean. Clean. And we call clean trash. That's right. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Isaiah 5 and 20 says, Woe unto them. Woe unto them. 
unto them that call evil good. That call evil good. And good evil. And good evil. That put darkness that for put light. Darkness for light. And light, and for, light darkness. for darkness. That put bitter for that sweet. That put bitter for sweet. And sweet for bitter. And sweet for bitter. Woe unto them. Woe unto them. That are wise in their own eyes. They look. They always want to bring their opinion. And prudent in their own sight. And their self will and righteous and think they're right in their own eyes. Woe unto them. Oh, look how God is pleading this case. Woe He's unto sorry them for people like this. That are mighty to drink wine. They are mighty to drink wine. And men of strength. Men of strength. To mingle strong drink. And mingle strong drink. Which justify the wicked for Wait, reward. They do what? Which justify the wicked for reward. That's something. Today, religion have turned their back on God. And taketh away the righteousness. They take away the righteousness. Of the righteous from him. Of the righteous from him. They Amen. justify the wickedness of the world. That's right. Why the preachers are afraid to stand up. That's right. Because if they stand up, their income may go down. That's right. The preachers are afraid to stand up for God because they're scared that that income will go down. Oh, yeah. I stand up for God if I ain't got a penny. Amen. You bear in mind, your last stop is not the coffin. No. Your last stop, you're going to face God. Oh, yes. So you get this thing in mind. You can hate what I'm telling you all you want. Yeah. I ain't going to be baptized. I ain't never going to church. One way or the other, you're going to end up in church. Yes, you will. Dead or alive. Or alive. Right. And the preacher can paint every nice picture of you when you die, he want. That's right. Amen. To let the people tell you you're going to heaven. You ever been to a funeral? <laughs> what the preacher, who the preacher's talking about? You looking around, make sure you're at the right funeral. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, you looking around. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? That's right. Me and Williams can bear witness. Oh, yes. Me and Williams was talking before we came out. <laughs> they done grew up together and been around each other almost over 50 years. Over 50 years. And I remember when William's brother passed. Yeah. And he, was, he, he got to the, he, they was already at the funeral and whatnot, and I already got there late. <laughs> and there's a Baptist preacher. Yeah. The moment I walk in, the preacher stopped preaching. He got <laughs> paranoid. He, he's at a funeral. He stopped. Amen. He said, we, we, got, we, we, we got Pastor Jennings in here. <laughs> And I looked and just sat down. That's right. William's mom looked at me and waved at me. I waved back at her. Mm -hmm. And that false prophet put William's brother in heaven. In heaven. And said that William's brother was like David. Like David. Was like King David. <laughs> That's right. That's what he said. And when he said that, I spoke out. <laughs> That's right. I said, Lord, have <laughs> <That's> mercy. <right. laughs> Even William's mother That's right. looked at him <laughs> and nudged William. William looked at me and just said, <laughs> Brother no more was like David than them rumple still skin with a bad hairdo. That's right. And said he was like Paul. And said he was like, <laughs> they were like Paul. That's what he said. Here the, here, here the man died a pure sinner. Yeah. My God. yeah. You that are here tonight. The death angel have not retired. No. We're here in the Bahamas with the word of God, not no fake healing meeting. That's right. I'm not here to blow on you and you fall out. That's right. I'm not here to wave no jacket like Benny Hinn no. and about 50 of you fall out. Oh, no. Oh, no. If you walked in here, walk out. That's right. That's right. Angle, you ain't going to walk in here then jump in the wheelchair and I'm going to pay you some money on this. No, I'm not here. Oh, no. These men have no fear, no respect for God. That's right. You better get your life right. That's it. Hey Amen. You're going to die one day. Like I said, Moreover, all the Caribbean and the rest of the world is just starting to recover from COVID. Yeah. If you are alive tonight. Oh, yes. It's only because of God's mercy. That's right. That you here. <laughs> Undoubtedly, some of you have lost friends. Family members, people you know, COVID took out. Yeah. Some of you had COVID. Yeah. Ask yourself, why didn't you die? That's right. Have you thought of it? Yeah. 
why didn't you die? And if you don't know, the answer is simple. Simple. You experience God's mercy. Oh, yes. Not that you deserve it, but you're living by God's mercy for what? Giving you more time. That's right. Who will take God to obey his will. That's right. And let's see what God's will is in Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. 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 Yeah. Glory to God. That's it. God wants you to repent. Repent. You that are here. Yeah. What you mean repent? Be sorry about your wrong. You know when you was a child and done wrong, and you just heard your father coming or heard your mother, you got repentant right then because you did not want to get beaten. That's right. I know I did. I had a repentant heart before my father got home. <laughs> and when I heard all them keys being put in the door, <laughs> it been times I went and was praying, Lord, don't let them beat me, Lord, don't let them beat me, Lord, don't let them beat me, Lord, don't let them beat me. I remember I, I got sassy with my brother. And I said things I should not have said. And he said, I'm going to tell daddy on you what came out your mouth. And when he said that, fear <laughs> came upon me. <laughs> One scripture says, sorrow filled their heart. <laughs> Fear fell upon me. And I remember, I went in the bathroom and got on the knees near the tub, looking up. <laughs> Lord Jesus, don't let them beat me. Lord. Don't let them beat me, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesus. Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was crying out to him. Lord. And I knew what I said, man. My, my father heard about it. He was furious. Mm. And my father was the type. He don't do a lot of talking. He beat it out of you. <laughs> and he came. I'd never forget it. Gene. I said, yeah. <laughs> Come in here. Lord, that God, judgment was there. <laughs> And I came in there, meek and lowly of heart. <laughs> he looked at me. Ricky says, you said such and such a thing. Did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> he looked at me and looked. Mom, I was saying to myself, he's like, answer my prayer, answer my prayer, answer my prayer. <laughs> and do you know, it's not like my father. He said, all right. You let that come out of your mouth again. I didn't buy you them clothes for me to beat them out. I bought you them clothes for you to play and wear out. But you let that come out of your mouth again, I'm going to take your clothes off, buck naked like you came from the, out into the world. Lord. Do you understand me? Yes. <laughs> Get on downstairs and do what you're supposed to do. I left out that room. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Man, my, I was saying Jesus at such a high pitch. <laughs> I was happy. Oh, Lord. Right then I was convinced. Convinced. He's an on-time God. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> He's an on-time God. Oh, Lord. Yes, he is. <laughs> now, oh, God man. compare the chastisement of our parents to the chastisement he bring us. That's right. Let me show you this quickly in the book of Hebrew. Back in then Hebrews. Then we'll go back to Acts of the Apostles. Back in Hebrews chapter 12 at verse 7. Parliament. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you yes. as with sons. As with sons. For what son is he what whom the father chasteneth not? son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, we're be all without partakers. chastisement, wherein all of us are partakers. Then are ye bastards, are bastards and not sons. And not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh. Look at the apostle reflecting back of what we had. Amen. We have had our fathers of our flesh we which had corrected fathers us. fathers of the flesh. Talking about your natural parents. That's right. That correct us. And we gave them reverence. We honor them. Shall we not much rather should we not much rather be in subjection be in subjection unto the father to the of creator spirits of spirits and live subject ourselves to God for what reason? And live so you can stay alive. That's right. Yeah. What else? For they verily for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. Yeah. But he for our profit. Wait a minute. God chastised us for what? For our profit. So we can gain something. 
That we might be partakers Glory of his holiness. God, that we may be partakers of his what? Of his holiness. Of his holiness means of his nature. He wants us to be partakers of his nature. As it stand now, right. we are laboring to put on his nature. We don't have it on yet, but That's the right. word of God is being taught to us so we can get dressed up in God's nature. That's and it. God's nature is a holy nature. That's right. That's right. You got to put on Christ. Oh, yes. And to put on Christ, you got to subject yourself to Scripture, which dress you up with Christ's attitude and Christ's character. That's right. Repent. Now, back Repent. in Acts 2.38, be sorry about your sins. That's right. Stop your smoking. Stop your drinking. Stop your gambling. Just stop going to the casino, gambling your money away, and then you on your knees begging God for more money because you broke. That's right. Come out these man-made religious churches that you go to here. Yeah. Amen. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational, Pentecostal, apostolic, and all of that other stuff. That stuff ain't in the Bible. No. You ain't never read it. No. Scientology, Mormon, Muslim, Hebrew, Israelite, Rastafari. Ain't none of that stuff in the Bible. No. None of it. None of it. Man made it and you followed it. That's it. So Pastor Jen, I want to go to a church where all black people go there. I don't care if you go to the church and everything's so black you can't see nothing. <laughs> Amen. If you don't obey the Bible, your black self is going to hell. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, we got white people in our church. We got a, a, several white people that come every Sunday. I have a gospel that brings white people. I wouldn't care if the Dairy Queen came there. <laughs> you don't obey the Bible, you that's white gonna go to hell just like the black. That's right. One thing I think about God, he don't care about your color. You know why? He made it. Oh, yeah. He made your color. He made your color. You think God is impressed with your color? Huh. Eh? Amen. You ain't a God ain't impressed with your old dingy color. <laughs> no. Wonderful, bro. Black folk got their fists up in the air. God will take that fist and beat you into hell with it. That's right. White folk got their hand up in the air to my own white power. God will take that and slap you into eternity. That's right. You're going about everything the wrong way. God wants you to humble yourself mm -hmm. after you hear the word of God, obey it, believe it, and act upon it. That's it. This is your life here. That's right. Listen. Then Peter, back in Acts 2 and verse 38. Then Peter the apostle said unto them, repent. He wants you to repent, mister, miss, repent. Be repent. sorry about your wrong. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You ain't going to obey everything what God say overnight, but it's time to start. That's right. That's right. Some people say, Pastor Jennings, I know you're preaching the truth, but I want to wait till I get right first before I come to church. How backward are you? Oh, yeah. I want to catch a fish first before I put a worm on the hook. <laughs> Pastor Dennis, uh, I want to take a bath first. You going to run water? No. Mm. How you going to wash? I'm going to believe. <laughs> That's right. You'll be a believed stinker. That's right. Huh? That's right. God wants you to do the first thing first. And the first thing you do is hear the word of the God, word. then believe what you hear, and then follow the instructions that's given. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent, repent. Have you ever been sorry for anything? <laughs> See, right. when you get a person sorry for something, you ain't got to fight with them. No. You ain't got to argue with them. No. But when you get a person that's not sorry, they're arrogant, self-righteous, self-centered. They are arguing with you all day and all night. Oh, yes. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. And be baptized, every one of all you. All of the Bahama Islands, all 700 islands. Amen. I want to take this message in person. Mm -hmm. And all 700 islands, mm -hmm. where, wherever people are. That's right. Amen. I don't, I don't know whether people is on every island. I don't know. But if one of the islands got, uh, got 10. Oh, yeah. If one island got 10. Amen. I want to go where it's 10 at. That's right. So I say, you will go where it's 10? Yes. That's right. The angels rejoice when one Over soul one. repented. Yeah. So if I go to an island where there's 10, I experienced that before. Oh, yes. I've done that. Yeah. We had one member years ago back in the States, in a state called Virginia, city of Fredericksburg. One member. I didn't have a car then. I was still in the basement then. I would get on the train mm -hmm. every month, once a month, riding to Fredericksburg, Virginia, That's right. preaching to one member, yeah. one mother. I went there every month, got on the train, every month. once a month for 10 years. That's right. She held service in the basement of her home. 
had one of them old wood stoves. For a pulpit, we used a little bookshelf. Just one member. Yeah. I would open up praise service. And I would get up and say, I'm glad for everybody that's here. <laughs> we gotta, we're glad for all of you that decided to come out tonight. Praise and testimony service. I read the scripture. Open up praise and testimony service. And I said, hey, you want to testify, magnify God. She would get up and testify. I said, all right, we'll get off. <laughs> I passed the offering around. I went to her, put mine in. Then I introduced the speaker. I said, all right, we got a brother here, all the way from Philadelphia. We're going to hear what God laid on his heart. Church, we bring him for you. Pastor Jenny, I get from back there and run behind the pulpit. Greetings, everybody. <laughs> Then when I greet the mother, I say we thank God for the brother that introduced our pastor. <laughs> Amen. But for 10 years, Wonderful, man. I traveled faithful. Wonderful. Preaching to one. Until God blessed us with a temple there and a beautiful crowd there now. Amen. You can't be faithful over a little. You will never be able to honor and respect much. That's right. Never. Repent. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. And what? And be baptized every one the of Bible you. The Bible never said, Bow your head and raise your hands and accept Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible never said, Join the church. No. All of you that was baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost was baptized wrong. That's right. You got it wrong because Jesus said, Baptized in the name Amen. of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, not baptized Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's right. As I said last night, I got a name. My name is Jennings. Yeah. When I was born, took on the title son, got married, took on the title husband, wife had children, took on the title father. But if I tell you to do something in my name, you're not going to say son, husband, or father. That's right. You're going to call my name Jennings. Right. The name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus, and Jesus. he's the Christ. That's it. The Bible ain't never said it was Trinity. No. Three separate distinct persons in the Godhead. The Bible don't say that nowhere. Nowhere. Your lying bishop said. That's right. Your man-made hell-deserving religion preach it. And the hypocrites in the religion follow it. That's right. Do you hear this? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Repent. And be baptized every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. That's how you get your sins washed away. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy and Ghost. God promised to fill you with this Holy Spirit. For the promises and unto you. you have that, the evidence is speaking in other tongues. That's right. How? How? For, how? For the promises unto you. God is not a liar. And to your children. He promised it to you and to your children and to them that is afar off, even as many. As the Lord our God shall call. And the prophet said, the Lord have spoken. Yeah. He have called the whole earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Amen. Anybody want to get right tonight and are afraid of going to hell Burning That's it. because of your hard-headedness and stubbornness and wickedness. That's it. Repent of your sins. Repent. Ask God to forgive you for your sins and mean it from your heart. Yeah. And I won't have to fight with you to be baptized. That's right. If you want to be baptized tonight the right way, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet, Nassau. Stand on your feet if you want to get right with God. Stand on your feet now. Wonderful. Wonderful. All of you that are standing, go over where those sisters and brothers are. All of you that are standing, go right over there. All of you that are standing, we're going to baptize you tonight. Come on. All of you that are standing, come on and get right with God tonight. Amen. 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 Repent. Repent and be baptized. Oh, hallelujah. Every one of you. How much? Every one of you. Repent. Amen. Repent. Repent, I say. Repent. Every one of you Amen. got this to do. That's right. Your mother, your father, your children, your sons, your daughters. That's right. You got this to do. Hallelujah. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. For the remission of sins. And you shall. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right.
Come on back tomorrow. Service begin what time tomorrow morning? 11 o'clock. Come on back. Tell your pastor to come. Don't you go sneak off to your old false church. Amen. Come on back tomorrow at 11 o'clock and get some good bread. May God keep you. May God preserve you. Let us all stand. Bishop Ferguson will close us out in prayer. The baptism will be done at Grand Stang's Temple. Service begins tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. with prayer meeting and 11 a.m. the service begins. So please, we look forward to see you tomorrow, God willing. And we are glad that you have taken the time to come. And everyone who are visiting, we are pleased to have you. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We ask now, Lord, that your will be done. Have your own way and your perfect way in our lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And everyone say amen. amen. Thank you for coming. Good night.